Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Jacobs. I'm the President and Chief Scientific Officer of Zicha Genesis Medicine. We are a biotech company headquartered in Las Vegas. Today, I wanna to talk to you about why you will live 30 years longer than you think. And I wanna go through some medical breakthroughs that are actually happening right now that will extend your life. But let's look about a century ago, over hundred years ago, what was the leading cause of death? And in 1900, the leading cause of death uh, were from bacterial infections, such diseases as tuberculosis, cholera, diphtheria, pneumonia, typhoid fever, the plague, leprosy, typhus and syphilis. These were incurable diseases back then and a death sentence. Life expectancy back then was only 39.1 years, but today we enjoy a life expectancy of almost 80 years. And this is really due to one medical breakthrough uh, penicillin, which was discovered in 1928, led to antibiotics, which wiped out most of those bacterial diseases. Let's look at the things that are killing us today. Here are the five leading causes of death today in adults. Heart disease is a major killer, 32%. Cancer will kill 21% of adults. Stroke, 13%. Respiratory diseases, 12%. And neurodegenerative diseases, 8%. So these are largely incurable diseases and a death sentence. So I wanna to talk to you about some new therapies which are being developed to treat all five categories of these diseases that are causing death today. We'll start with heart disease, which is the leading cause of death in the world and in the United States. I wanna talk about a breakthrough treatment with therapeutic angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the growth of new blood vessels and a drug is being developed, a biological drug, which is in our bodies that can actually grow new blood vessels in the human heart. Let's look at a clinical trial that was ongoing at the University of Cincinnati uh, using this regenerative biological product, FGF1. Uh, ABC News actually went to the clinical trial site and interviewed uh, the cardiologist and some of the patients there. So I'll run that. I want you to pay attention. The cardiologist is gonna point to an area in the heart where new blood vessels are actually growing. But since receiving an experimental treatment for his blocked arteries, his pain is gone. I really feel great. Duke was one of the first heart patients in the country to be treated with a protein actually capable of growing brand new arteries. The genetically engineered protein is injected directly into the heart. Within days, a network of new vessels begins to grow around the blockage, increasing the blood supply. Dr. Lynn Wagner showed us the changes in one patient's heart. We see a small, narrow main artery and not very many secondary and tertiary arteries. This is after the treatment. What we're now seeing is new blood vessels growing here uh, off the, the end of this artery and the patients themselves? Symptomatically, they're improved within a couple of weeks of the treatment. Just ask Constance Donnelly. Oh, I feel wonderful. I've never felt so good in the last five years. It's what doctors already see potential in other cases where the blood supply needs a boost, such as strokes and diabetes. So that beating heart you saw there was Constance Donnelly's heart, the woman that was interviewed. She came into this clinical trial as a cardiac cripple and there she was three months later, up and about, uh, after receiving FGF1 injections into her heart. So in conclusion, if therapeutic angiogenesis can reverse heart disease, this would save tens of millions of lives every year. Let's move on to the second leading cause of death, cancer. I wanna talk about a revolutionary new method uh, to treat cancer developed by scientists at the National Cancer Institute and at the MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas. Solid tumors represent 90% of all adult cancers. We see a tumor here in the leg of an individual. And what I wanna point out is how extensive the vascular system is for these tumors. You can see this an extensive network of uh, blood vessels supplying the tumor uh, with blood. And these vessels are different. Tumor vasculature is different than healthy tissue. So, what the National Cancer Institute has developed are uh, therapies that only attack vasculature that's in a tumor. Here they are. This is a new therapy. It's a novel anti-tumor phage particle shown in blue here. 
the sphage particle is approaching the vasculature of the tumor cell. It's targeted to the tumor vasculature. It's got a special zip code, which will only let it bind to the tumor vasculature. Once it's binding, it injects a toxic payload uh, directly into the tumor's blood vessels, and that results in the tumor's blood supply being destroyed. So the National Cancer Institute tested this in animals. They use naturally occurring tumors in dogs. Uh, and this shows a sarcoma at day zero, about four inches across. And then three times a week, these dogs got an infusion of these phage particles. And you can see here, after 28 days of treatment, shrinkage of the tumor. And at day 56, almost gone, only uh, less than an inch across. We can see a uh, graph of that tumor shrinkage over time. And I believe if they treated longer, this tumor would have completely disappeared. Another important point about the antiphage particles is that they not only will attack the primary tumor, but if the tumor has metastasized to different parts of the body, those phage, which are very tiny, will find those tumors, will find the tumor vasculature there and kill uh, all metastasized tumors. So in conclusion, this novel phage anti-tumor particle has the potential to eradicate 90% of all cancers. This is a very big deal and it could be a tremendous life-saving therapy. The third cause of death, leading cause of death is stroke. And I wanna talk about, again, some animal studies which point to how regenerative medicine, in particular FGF1, can cause recovery from a stroke. Stroke disability is a large problem. We look at about six months after someone's had an acute stroke, a third of the patients will die from that acute stroke, a third of the patients will recover, and unfortunately, a third of the patients will have permanent disabilities, problems with walking, problems with their speech. And we can treat, at least in animals, disability using uh, this potent growth factor, again, fibroblast growth factor one, FGF1. Uh, mice can be given a stroke, Half of them are treated with the FGF1, half are given a placebo dose. And on the right here, this white area, these are brain slices through a mouse brain. You can see this is the stroke area, the damaged brain tissue, basically dead neurons and dead blood vessels. On the right, FGF1 is given for two weeks. We know we uh, reestablish the blood flow in these brains and that neurons, functional neurons, come back in these uh, treated animals. We can test that by doing motor skill testing of the mice. This is a rotating bar, typical test of test motor skills. Normal mice hang on. Our stroke treated animals with SGF1 are hanging on pretty well as, <clears throat> as well, but placebo treated animals have no, basically no motor skills to hang on to this rotating bar. So in conclusion, FGF1, regenerative medicine, has the potential to reverse these devastating disabilities caused by a stroke. And if we can get this through the clinic, we can enhance the lives of millions of stroke sufferers. The fourth leading cause of death is respiratory diseases. And again, we can use regenerative medicine to reverse lung damage. Diseases such as COPD, emphysema, asthma, flu, COVID-19, smoking, pneumonia, allergies. These all cause lung damage. So let's look at the problem here. Uh, we inhale all kinds of irritants, chemicals, gasoline, fertilizer, viruses, and these cause damage to the epithelial cells which line our lungs. They become inflamed, they become dysfunctional. And as they become dysfunctional, we get less oxygen transferred into our bodies. And eventually we get scar tissue forming in the lungs. Let's look how regenerative medicine in the form of inhaled FGF1 can regenerate uh, new lung tissue, can regenerate uh, epithelial cells. So here is slices through an animal's lungs. Purple color is newly regenerated epithelial cells. Again, the cells that are important to get oxygen into the body. Without FGF1, we have big gaps in the lung tissue, and these animals are not doing nearly as well as the animals that got FGF1. So in conclusion, uh, damage to lung epithelial cells gradually chokes the body from its oxygen supply. And regenerative medicine, 
such as FGF1 has the potential to reverse this lung damage. Okay, the fifth leading cause of death is neurodegenerative diseases. And there's a whole host of these diseases. We're gonna talk about these four, Parkinson's disease, uh, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, and dementia. Parkinson's disease, there's been some very nice studies done in the gold standard animal model, the monkey model of Parkinson's. Uh, we can give this guy Parkinson's disease by injecting a toxin into his brain. Let me show you the results of such an experiment. The monkey is given this paraquat-like toxin, herbicide, directly into its brain. And you can see over a period of nine months, this is motor skill testing. So four is normal motor skills. One is highly abnormal motor skills. Out at month nine here, these monkeys, these monkeys are displaying all the classical symptoms of Parkinson's disease, gait disturbances, tremors. One group we treat, they treated in blue with FGF1. Second group in red gets placebo. You can see reversal of motor skill deficits in the FGF1 treated animals. The placebo treated animals continue to decline. We look in the brains of these monkeys. We can see if we're regenerating the neurons that get lost in Parkinson's disease. These are the dopamine secreting neurons. And in fact, <clears throat> you can see here very nicely this is the area that houses the dopamine neurons in the brains of the monkeys. These brown staining cells are all dopamine secreting neurons, where without FGF1, we see very little of the newly regenerated dopamine neurons. This is attacking the root cause of Parkinson's, and we believe this results in the better motor skills that we see in the treated monkeys. Let's move on to multiple sclerosis. Uh, we and other medical researchers believe that vascular leakage due to endothelial cell dysfunction is a primary initiator of multiple sclerosis. Endothelial cells line, they're shown here, they line each and every one of the blood vessels in our bodies, and they keep the blood constituents inside the blood vessel. But in these diseases, we and others believe leaks occur, and let me show you what the consequences of that leakage is. This is in uh, multiple sclerosis. This is a healthy blood vessel, optimal blood flow, healthy neurons, blood constituents staying within the blood vessel. Development of multiple sclerosis due to a number of factors, defective genes, smoking, lack of vitamin D, pathogens, disrupted blood vessels, blood vessels that are leaking, blood vessels that have holes in them, reducing the blood flow to the neurons, and more importantly, leaking things out of the blood vessel, which never should be leaked out, including fibrinogen, a sticky coagulation pro protein that can coat these neurons, followed by immune cells. Immune cells see the fibrinogen coated neuron and say, this is foreign and attack it. So this is the autoimmune response that we know is occurring in MS, but what precedes that is this endothelial cell dysfunction. Let's look at an animal model, an animal model of multiple sclerosis. These are blood vessels taken from those, uh, the lesions, the MS lesions in those animals. This is the inside of the blood vessel. You can see those holes, this endothelial cell dysfunction. And if you treat those animals with FGF1, uh, you can see a gradual healing of those blood vessels. Out here at day 30, we see these healed blood vessels. They're not leaking. And these animals have recovered uh, from their multiple sclerosis. What about dementia and Alzheimer's, vascular dementia? We can use functional MRI to look at blood flow in the brains of patients that are suffering from dementia. This is a MRI of the entire top of our brains, the cortex region. Blood flow can be seen, blue is normal blood flow, uh, yellow is reduced, and then red is severely reduced blood flow in this person with dementia. These areas line up with areas of the brain we know are involved in memory, uh, cognition, executive functioning. And if treated with a regenerative medicine, such as FGF1, we fully expect that these areas would increase in perfusion, followed by functional neurons. So in conclusion for this part of the talk, we believe regenerative medicine, such as FGF1, could stimulate new blood vessel growth and rejuvenate leaky blood vessels in the brain. This would lead to regeneration of new neurons and the potential reversal of these devastating neurodegenerative diseases. 
So I hope I've convinced you that we have some medical breakthroughs that are happening right now. I give you those five examples, those five major causes of death, all can be treated with regenerative medicine. And so these major causes of death may no longer be incurable death sentences. These new therapies I've talked about could give you 20 to 30 additional years of healthy living. So I thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions at this point.